through Groundbreaker. Every couple of months, we even get a big interstellar freighter. Two biggest operations are the board, that is, Halcyon Holdings and Sublight Salvage. But there are independent operators around the promenade deck. Most of those jobs are going to take you off station, though. Okay. Uh, I'm looking for something a bit more local. Commandant Sanita might have a couple of folks she needs killed. Bad folks, I mean. Not, uh, not regular folks. She'll be at the security desk behind me. Chief Jun Lei might have an errand needs running. She's all tied up trying to fix our heat problem. You'll find her in engineering. No kidding? I'd love to get a look at this old girl's innards. I bet they're real twisty and weird. In a good way. Okay. Uh, let's see. How about something long term? If you're thinking to make a career here, don't waste your time. Full time jobs on Groundbreaker tend to be inherited or go to a fellow crew member's kid. Keep it in the family, you know. How does Halcyon Holdings work anyway? Are you pulling my leg? Oh, thank you, Lion Jotun. Or, yeah, Lion Jotun. Thank you so much for the follow. I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, I just want to hear your take on it. It goes like this. Back on Earth, before the crossing, the powers that be were selling off stakes in distant star systems they thought had potential. A bunch of companies decided to throw in together and form the Halcyon Holdings Corporation, then buy up the rights to this here colony. That group's what we now call the board. Uh, how does Groundbreaker fit into that? Groundbreaker was one of the original colony vessels to come over on the crossing, a few years before her sister ship, the Hope. Once everybody'd been de-thawed and dropped dirt side, the original crew of the Groundbreaker decided they rather liked the spacefaring life. I guess that was the start of our independent spirit. Now, here we are. Hmm. So there's actually a boardroom somewhere with all these company heads in it. Sitting around, drinking whiskey and smoking cigars? Yeah, probably. Can't say for sure, of course. Doubt I'll ever see the inside of it myself. Board runs most of the system, don't they? Yep. Groundbreaker's the only real independent port. Aside from us, there's just tramp freighters and wildcat miners. Seems like every year the board's offices get bigger and their ships take up more of the landing bays. Haven't seen nearly as many tramp crews this year. Okay, got it. Glad to help. Um, I didn't think there were many uh, independent operators in the system. Relative to the board holdings? Not really. But there's a few with the means to go where they will. They aren't rich, but they aren't likely to look too close at your work history either. What do you know about Sublight Salvage? They strip the parts from derelict ships and abandoned outposts. There's some that say they make the derelicts and encourage folks to abandon their steads. Sublight gives me the creeps. I've known folks who went to work for them and just vanished. They're on the promenade run by a woman named Lilia Hagen. I'm only telling you so you know to avoid them. Alright, for just a second, guys. Uh, I gotta check something real quick. All right, guys, I have got to go hit the um, little little penguins room real quick. So um, I'm going to throw up a video of mine from YouTube to since you guys have something while in the meantime. And I'll be back shortly. Uh, this one's my collecting retro video games panel I did at Etsukan a while back. Um, give me just a second here. I'm Jerry, uh, aka Longwood Geek. Uh, that is pretty much my branding now on every social media platform. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube. I haven't had a chance to change yet, um, simply because changing stuff with Google. Massive influx of people. Yeah. 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 Y
I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, dude, there's people in there. Oh, well, we were looking at three months. People are like, oh, wait, if you're coming back this way, there's a tripod on the table. Thank you. I'm, I'm waiting for that. Yeah, I am recording the film. Yeah, I'll take Just because I want to see how I perform. I may or may not put it up on YouTube. Ah, there we go. Uh, well, actually, it would help if it would start playing. Yes, this is Honor. This is the evil one. This is the one that if you're not careful, she will take your face off. She is adorable, baby. Yes, she Are we having fun? Uh, yeah. I'm almost to the ice stage. Nice! Oh, actually, I am at the ice stage, and I've got 16 miles left. Okay. Oh, I've never been able to get past this one. Alright, that. Sorry, guys. Normally, I'm, I wouldn't do this, but, um, yeah. Pretty much. Meeting the mic, we're going to go see a man about a fish, enjoy this video, and I'll be using this whenever I am AFK, so be right back. Uh, in fact, I have owned 
all but three of the major American companies. There are only three I have not owned personally, and that is the Neo Geo AES, uh, the Turbo Express, and the SK Pocket Color. Yeah, well, the Turbo Express of the three, the hardest to find is probably the Turbo Express. The most expensive to own is the Neo Geo AES. And I've got a couple of SK Pocket Colors that I could put my hands on if I wanted to. I just haven't had the extra money to, to spend. I mean, that's one thing you have to be, you have to know what your budget is and stick to it. That's one big thing with collecting video games. Uh, you cannot, I mean, unless you have an unlimited budget, and I don't know anybody that does, you have to be choosy. And so I pick, like I said, certain focus areas. Uh, big box PC games being like my primary focus. But why do I collect games? Oh, actually, insert the show. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So why do we collect video games? Well, it's a great way to remember the past uh, or discover a past that you may not have been a part of. Um, I'm guessing quite a few of you here are under the age of 30. At least we got a few. So I'm 34. That means I was born in 1983. And so I came right as the Nintendo started. Not my first video game system. My first one was a used Atari 2600 on a black and white TV I had in my bedroom. <laughs> I actually yeah. have you beat by, I'm, I was born in 81. Okay, so you got me by a couple years. <laughs> <laughs> so the NES came out really, I think, like the year after I was born. Was it 84 the NES came out? Or was it 85? 85. 85. 85. Okay, so two years. Japan was 84. Okay, yeah. I knew it came out. I knew it, Nintendo hit at some point. Mm -hmm. And of course, they had the Game & Watch before that. Game & Watches had come out uh, because they did have arcade machines before that. But I kind of missed just barely the arcade age, uh, the early Atari age, and even really the early NES age. I didn't get my first NES until 92. So for me, it was a great way to discover things that were before me. It's a great, I'm, an, I'm an amateur historian at heart. I studied co in college, I studied as a computer science major with a minor in history. And so this, it's a great way to remember and archive it. Um, if, you're, if you're picking systems that, to collect for that are part of your youth, it's a great way to remember happy times when you were a kid. Um, it's bragging rights. Like I said, I've owned all but three of the major uh, systems released in America. You know, that's kind of cool. At least I think so. Um, and my mom thinks so too. But I don't live in a basement anymore. Um, I have my own house, I promise. Um, but anyway, so, you know, it's, it's a great way to have some bragging rights in the geek world. I mean, everybody wants to be known for something. Um, and so having the weird stuff is cool. Um, it's an investment. Heaven forbid you had to sell your collection, but let's say you needed money back could sell it and actually make a decent amount of money um, to get you through and then start collecting again. And unfortunately though, it can be both an expensive or inexpensive hobby. Depends on how much you want to invest in what you're collecting for. Um, that's why I tell people, set a goal for collecting. For me, like I said, it's big box PC games. And I'll tell you, those aren't cheap. Um, I am always looking for yard sales, flea markets, where people are selling, they don't know what they're selling. Um, so I try to grab them. Spe complete inbox PC games are awesome because they have some of the best add-ins. I mean, before collector's editions, you had big box PC games. I mean, we, we, we didn't even call them collector's editions because that's just what they came with. Like you get a copy of Ultima 5, well guess what, it's gonna come with a cloth map, a code wheel, an in-depth manual with a ton of backstory and lore, um, possibly an art book because they couldn't put the art they wanted to in the game, so you would get some of the concept art. That is what came in a standard box. Nowadays, to get that, you've got to spend an extra 20, 30, 40 dollars to get the collector's edition. Uh, or get the collector's edition strategy guide. Or get both. Well, and that's the problem too. With digital codes, or at least with the old, that's, that's kind of the problem that we're gonna start running into when it comes to game collecting. Um, especially if you're trying to collect physical games. A lot of them come with codes now. In fact, if you buy a PC game really from about 2003 on, because um, they're not even really making a lot of physical releases for them anymore, you're looking at the possibility of not being able to run them legally. Now, I'm putting that in air quotes because I'm sorry, you bought the game, you own the game, you should be able to run it. But the code systems that they use to activate those games may no longer be functional. So you may have to resort to, and I'm not, I'm, that's one thing I'll never tell you how to do in my panels is how to do the illicit stuff, but you may have to go through and actually crack a game in order to play it. And what about MMOs? The servers aren't even up anymore. 
I mean, I've got several that I miss, like Earth and Beyond, um, that yeah, I have a physical game for, but I can't play it. There's no way for me to play it unless somebody can resurrect the server. So I have focused on collecting PC games really from about, I'd love to get a copy of Akala which is one of the first commercially produced games by Ward British uh, Richard Garriott, which was, I think, in 79, um, up through really probably about the early to mid-2000s. Uh, that's kind of when they really stopped being fully featured without a code. Um, but I also do collect RPGs. My other focus area is RPGs and strategy games. So if I'm collecting for a system besides the PC, I'm looking for those games in particular. Now, if I happen to find a game that I know is worth a lot that I don't collect for, I'm still going to grab it. There's no harm in grabbing a game, especially if you're going to turn around and get more games with it. Um, if I find a copy of Earthbound, I'm keeping that. But if I find a copy of like Back to the Future on the NES, we'll use that as an example. Terrible game. But if I knew it was worth like 50 or 60 bucks and I can get it for five, well then I'm gonna buy it and turn it around to somebody who wants. Maybe there's somebody that collects movie tie-in games. That's a legitimate collection. Maybe the things of nerd. Yeah. Or didn't uh, Angry Joe do a, or Angry Video Game Nerd do a video on it? Yeah, that was one of his very early videos. It was in Back to the Future. Yeah, so I mean, you've got people. Yeah, that's just it. There's always a market for everything. I mean, even even someday, 20 or 30 years from now, you're going to have somebody who has all the Imagine games on the DS, and they're going to turn around and sell that collection for like a grand because nobody will have them. Or somebody wants to archive them. But imagine looking at them now, you can get them for like 10 cents on the dozen. Um, so what do you want to focus your collection on? Um, who here has started collecting? Okay, what are you focusing your collection on? Um, I have a complete Sega 32X collection and I'm working on finishing the NTSC Super Nintendo Oh, that's awesome. How far along are you in that? Um, on the Super Nintendo, I've got like 300 of the 700 and so. Wow, now that's impressive. Yeah, so that is incredible. <laughs> um, in fact, there's only uh, the only other person I know of a complete SNES collection, I think it's John Hancock. Yes, the immortal John Hancock. Uh, you have to include the immortal whenever you say his name. Sorry, <laughs> um, anybody else here collect so far? What you got? Uh, not, not much really. Just aside from old Genesis, I found a Goodwill and a Aladdin copy. The copy that I just got a Jurassic Park copy. I'm really limited in what I can get in those because of the space I have. Yeah. What I actually want to play, I don't have the space like. Yeah, I, I, just thought, I just thought, remember, I just got a working Genesis, and I'm like, well, I'm going to hook this up with some games on it, which I'm really going to have to find a frame wise because it's not looking good on my sick TV. And that's actually something I'm going to get to a little bit later when it comes to actually collecting the hardware and playing the games. Uh, that can actually be a challenge, playing the games on the original hardware. But really, when you're, when you're deciding on the focus for your collection, um, how large do you want it to be? What kind of room do you have? I mean, do you, do, you, do you have, like I have a spare bedroom in my house that I've turned into my library, uh, but that's pretty much all the room I've got. Um, so I'm limited to that space. Uh, so I've focused on a particular system. Um, some people focus on a genre. Um, and really, you kind of just branch out from there into what you want to collect. Where to start looking, and you actually brought up a really good point. I actually probably have gotten about 70% of my collection, kid you not, Goodwill. Of all places, you wouldn't think Goodwill, really? They don't often know. Some of them have gotten better about it. Um, there's now shopgoodwill.com, which is um, an online... Yeah, you have to be really careful when you get from there. Um, but I'll tell you a fun story a little bit about something I got from there that I got an awesome deal on. Um, but you can, if you look online, be careful because the shipping prices will get you when you do Shop Goodwill. Um, but Goodwill itself is a great place to look. Now, you're not going to find a lot of console games there anymore. Um, they mostly ship, like in North Carolina, they all ship to a special retail outlet they have called The Grid. Um, others have them in a special case. So they sent, they're, try, they're trying to centralize some of it, and others have put it up on the Shop Goodwill site. But any thrift store you walk into, these are the places to check. Electronics, books, if you're looking for stretch guides or art books. Uh, the CDs, VHS, and DVD section, oftentimes you'll find CD-based computer games mixed in. I'll 
All right, I'm back, everybody. Sorry about that. Had to uh, take care of some pingu business. Have you seen me about fish? Yes. Okay. Probably going to go take some pink pepto bismol later. I'll tell you that. Mm. All right. That's all I need to know about work. All right. Uh, I love penguins and groovy people, so I had to throw you in puck fall. Is that not procrastinating? But hey, I feel you on that, uh, Lion. I am always, I always have a stream as background noise at work. Always. What can you tell me about Udom Bedford? He's friendly enough unless you speak ill of the board. Get the sense he doesn't care for Groundbreaker much. Not that he would, being a board man and all. He's our liaison. Sounds like a fun guy. Really likes his cereals, too. Maybe a little too much. Bit of a weird bird, all told. Don't see what's so wrong about liking cereals. They're fun. Udom takes it to an uh, unhealthy level. Okay, seems like there's some tension between the board and the groundbreaker. You noticed, huh? Um, I'm sharp like that. What can I say? We're passionate folks, and the board can't abide that independent spirit, especially not when it might impact their bottom line. All their interstellar freighters come through us, and we skim a few bits off the top and manifest processing fees with every one. Folks around here will bluster that the board hates our freedom, but really, they know we can stop their out-system shipments any time we like, and that terrifies them. Mm. I'm glad it terrifies them bastards. Keep pushing them. It's a delicate balance, right? We could cancel their freighter's docking privileges in retaliation, but where'd that lead us? They got assault cruisers, gunships, and a handful of mining operations at their fingertips. We push them too hard, maybe they decide we'd be better in 10 trillion little pieces. Or they cobble together a new groundbreaker and put us out of business. The board wouldn't do that, would they? The board is necessary to provide order to the colony. They believe it's their prerogative to overrun you. But whether you allow that is up to you. It's a tough line to walk, no doubt about that. But we may do all right. So far, anyway. Thanks for the info. Sure thing. See you around. Be seeing you. Workbench discovered. Ooh, I do like my workbenches, especially now. A quest objective requires you to enter a restricted area. If caught inside, you'll be shot on sight. Using a disguise will prevent immediate hostilities. This is it. Security. I can check the departures registry to find out which crew ching. I mean, the scholar shipped in and out with. I picked up this weird signal the other day. It was coming from Monarch. Here we go again. No one lives on Monarch. It's a wasteland. You're hearing things. No, seriously. There was a lot of static at first, but then this voice said his name was Graham? Graham, right. Broadcasting on a dead world full of monsters. Now I've heard everything. You know, it takes more muscles to frown than to smile. Who told you that, Graham? <laughs> Asshole. I love the dynamic dialogue. <laughs> All right. Okay, so he's... Oh, that explains his shotgun. All right. Let's see. I can go to my armor real quick. Oh, can I not repair... Can I not modify my helmet? Oh, that's interesting. So that one does not have any way for me to modify the helmet. It's interesting. Okay. Let's see what mods I accidentally purchased. Let's see. Oh, pistol, my pistol. Oh, God. You rang? 
I don't know what those are. Those evil little fluffy things. I do not like those evil little fluffy things. In fact, they are the least of the things in this game that I have enjoyed so far. Wait. Where are my mods? Oh. I just have the armor mod on me? No. Oh, okay. Talk to her through the glass or uh, oh yeah, okay. Hi there. Haven't seen you around before. Nice. What can groundbreaker security do for you today? Okay, so I need coffee and we need food. Yes. So let me switch back over to this. Hopefully I don't crash anything. I'm gonna set up an AFK screen. Okay. Just getting my bearings, what do you do here? This is the security desk, sir. If you're here to report a crime, you'll want to talk to Commandant Sunita. I'm not authorized to take incident reports anymore. Uh, why can't you take incident reports? I'm not so good at filing. Mix up first name and surname one, two, seven times. Well, folks are liable to start taking your filing privileges away. Do you do, I don't know, tours or something? We can't just let anyone walk in here. I wouldn't be, uh, well, that's not, uh, we just don't. Maybe if you clear an open bounty and get in good with Commandant Sunita, or help Chief Tennyson fix this heat, that might warrant a thank you tour or something. Hmm. Well, my persuade's high enough. Or do I want to bribe him? Uh, why not? I told you, I'm not allowed to file stuff anymore. All right, back to my other questions. All right. Uh, a lot of freighters come through the station, must keep you busy. Less than there used to be. Fewer freighters passing through these days. I spend some shifts just listening to the wireless. Why aren't as many freighters coming through? Search me. I mean, don't search me, because that's my job. <laughs> Get it? Uh, I reckon you'd have to ask the folks in Byzantium. Bet you got a whole got seized contraband from all over the system locked up back there. Sure, and stuff from outside the system too, off the uh, interstellar freighters. That's why we also have so many armed Mardets on duty here. What if some of that contraband's mine and I'm here to claim it? That'd be awful weird. On account of you should be locked up back here too, then. Okay. Oh. You got it. Back to my other questions. All right. All right, see you around. All right, Commandant Sunita. Unless you're here to file an incident report or to inquire about the bounty posting, I must kindly ask you to clear out. The Mardet's offices aren't for leisure time nor loitering. I'm interested in that McRed bounty. Where can I find him? Last tip we got pointed toward the back bays. You want the reward? Do the legwork. Okay, why don't you send a Mardet, a Mardet to apprehend him? Oh, I will. As soon as the Chief approves the personnel reorg required for a bounty dispatch. So, in about three to seven weeks. I'll take the posting. You and about six other enterprising mavericks. It's only a matter of time before someone brings me McRed's head. Or his lucky lighter, as proof of kill. I do hope you're the lucky hunter, though. Good luck and skip speed to you. Uh, let's see what bad.